Hello everyone, welcome to this talk on civil engineering and how you can get into it. Um, my name is Oshin Bradley, I'm a student civil engineer studying civil engineering at Bath and I'm an ICE, which is the Institute of Civil Engineers, um, Quest Scholar, which I'll come on to later, at the construction firm Morgan Sindel. Every day, you and I walk past buildings and roads. We cross bridges and use energy supplies without even a second thought. But what if I told you that everything, 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 that everything around us tells a tale and that you could help build this magical story? What? commute isn't the most exciting of activities but it could be a whole lot tougher if it wasn't for these. Engineers invent and design things but civil engineers they create some of the really big things. Check this out an entire underground world! Engineering is a word for the skill set that allows you to create anything in your head. How incredible is that? These are the innovative designs that create the backdrop to the world we live in. Strong, durable structures built from the ground up to help us live more comfortably, travel faster and be connected to essential networks. The shopping centres you go to, the entire road and transport system. Even the libraries you visit. None of this would be here if it wasn't for civil engineers. How often do you think about the way water reaches you? When you're thirsty, you grab yourself a drink. It's easy to take it for granted. trip in the countryside would be a pretty bumpy ride if it wasn't for the smooth paths that pave our way. Hello! And thanks to structures designed to withstand floods, like this sea wall, we're protected from natural disasters. All of the everyday things that barely cross our mind couldn't be done without civil engineers, without the skills of people just like me and you. Shh. And don't worry, being an engineer isn't all about muddy boots and building sites. You could share your passion by working with these guys using state-of-the-art technology to realise your ideas and inspire others. The potential to create life-changing structures really is enough to blow anyone away. Choosing civil engineering means a well-paid, exciting and fulfilling career with the satisfaction of knowing that you help bring all of this to life. Where does your story begin? That video might have inspired you into what civil engineers actually do. And to spell it out, we build homes, schools, hospitals, build the transport infra infrastructure, the road and rail, uh, we provide energy and water. Uh, if you think of all the pipes and the dams, the reservoirs that have to be built to provide people with drinking water, the energy, someone has to build the nuclear power plants. Um, but we've got one eye on the future as well, because um, everything we build is built to last. So the uh, you might ask the question, what has global warming got to do with um, civil engineering. Well, if you consider that we build things to last, our impact has a, a much longer effect than 
someone in uh, an industry like uh, mechanical engineering or electrical engineering because our structures last for hundreds of years and if they're wrong at the start and they're energy inefficient and they're environmentally unfriendly then we've got to deal with that for the next hundred years so it's important we get this right. right so now I'm going to talk about some of the engineering projects that have kind of motivated and inspired me uh, to go on this journey. Well, first up is the Thames Tideway Tunnel, which is the super sewer that they're building in London, they're trying to complete it by 2025. And this is going to stop all the extra pollution that comes up through rainwater um, and spills into the Thames. They're going to stop that. And um, yeah, there's a really good documentary on it called the Five Billion Five Billion Pound sewer. So if you watch that, that will give you more tips and might inspire you too. Next bit is really a, an astonishing engineering feat. It's the um, tallest and heaviest structure ever moved by man. Um, it's the Troll A oil rig. Although oil is not the most sustainable thing. Um, you, it's worth looking up this how they move this structure. You can see there that they've got the ships. Um, had, I think they had like about five or six ships that yanked the um, the whole structure into place, pulling it across the sea. So it's definitely a video worth seeing. See there, it's about um, 100 metres higher than the Eiffel Tower, so it's a really big structure. And the last one um, is the fourth crossings. Um, like I said before, these structures are here to stay. The oldest bridge there in the picture is uh, 130 years old. The new bridge, the one closest to us, is um, it can help carry 100,000 people every day. So our, what we build as civil engineers has a wide and long-term impact on society. So whether an engineering career is to your liking will depend on certain aspects. So if you like design and building, um, solving problems, improving lives, then yeah, engineering is definitely going to be a career for you. I would say that you need maths A-level because maths is um, pretty much essential in all uh, university degree courses for civil engineering and physics really helps as well so if you've got them two you've got solid foundation um don't have to have physics but it does really help and the third one could be anything really i've personally studied maths uh, maths uh, history and um well there's people on my course like chemistry or english or geography or computing design it goes on so yeah, maths is essential, but um, physics helps, but um, the third A level is down to you, really. I'll just run through some of the facts about our career. Um, it's above average pay. Um, if you work hard, you can get up to 100 grand a year. Um, we've got a clear route through study and qualification. Quest scholarship, which I'll come on to in a minute, like really supports you from early on. And um, study-wise, if you get a good degree at a good university, um, Quest Scholarship provides a job, work hard, you're on your, well on your way to becoming a, a professional civil engineer. Um, but you don't have to become a civil engineer because there's loads of people on my course um, who are not actually planning to be civil engineers. So you might take a civil engineering course, think that it's not for you, and there's the skills you've um, learned on this course will hold you in good stead for many other careers. So it's not, um, it's not a hard and set conclusion that you have to become a civil engineer if you decide to study civil engineering. But we do need civil engineers, like there's always going to be um, construction, like you're seeing with the projects like the London Super and maintenance going on. So we need civil engineers for like and environmentally friendly civil engineers. If we're going to keep our buildings um, energy efficient and um, long lasting as well and also beneficial to society because um, boring buildings are not what anyone wants. We're in demand across the world, there's um, many examples I can think of. Some guy came into our lecture hall in um, first year and he was saying how he just got back from a trip from Malaysia doing engineering business so we, our skills are in, like you're never going to go to a country that doesn't need civil engineers so tra like you can travel wide on this uh, degree. We're one of the happiest jobs, I can say from experience that um, most people I've spoken to, not many of them think, oh, this is a slog. 
um, the work's always different, it's challenging, but that's a good thing. So yeah, definitely a happy job. We have a high status. Um, we're, we're well respected as experts in, in our field. So yeah, if that's what you're after. Um, I really loved the work I did on the Tarway Flood Alleviation Scheme. So it was a scheme in Thatcham, near Newbury, and it was a reservoir, basically. And it protected 275 homes from flooding. It mitigated their risks. I don't think there is another career that's as meaningful as this one. And I know you're probably thinking medics, doctors, but think about Joseph Bazalgette, one of the greatest engineers, in my opinion, that ever lived. He came up with the sewers as we know them throughout London and basically put an end to the cholera epidemic. Personally, it was my own experience as a young child, maybe between the ages of seven to nine, witnessing the transformative power of engineering. For example, if you live in a place like the UK, you have water that comes from your tap without even a second thought. But there's some parts of the world where that is actually an achievement. Seeing that in a developing nation, how that project transformed the environment, transformed the community, made me think I want to be the kind of person who can bring this kind of development to a community and transform it. I just love performing, I love singing, and you'll probably see me on a Friday busting a dance move at the swing class. So that's my passion in life. And so I do that as well as being a civil engineer. So I like the fact that you can almost go through these different paths in your career, be it a commercial role where you manage contracts and you try and get the best value for the public purse, in our case as a public sector, or uh, designing where you can work from being a bridge designer to something else, and you can switch and explore all the different facets and all the different design challenges. So I definitely say that's one of the things I would actually put above anything else is go get it, that practical work experience, speak to local contractors, local consultancies, local businesses, and be like, I'm a free resource. I really want to get some experience. And people will be happy to help you because people just want to see people achieve and we want to make sure that if you are the future of engineering then we help you grow and we nurture that right so about me i'm a third year student at this uh, university of bath and so far the project i've worked on is the barking riverside project in east london which built a new train station um why i got into civil engineering was well I thought I was pretty good at maths and physics. I enjoyed it and I always thought there'd be some sort of science-y, maths -y based career at the end of it. I didn't know it'd be civil engineering, but as I go on to the Quest Scholarship kind of led me into this career and I'm glad ever since I chose it. Now I've talked about my way um, where I'm studying at university. Um, this isn't the only way. Um, if you're more good with your hands, you might be more willing to do an apprenticeship or a vocational course. There was someone on site who I worked with at Barking Riverside and he left school when he was 16 and he literally got onto site, um, learned the ropes there. And as soon as I was on site, he was, he was telling me how to do things. I had just been learning in a book, but he'd been on site. So there's plenty of ways you can learn uh, how to do civil engineering. It's not a set route. Right, so now I'm going to mention the ICE Quest Scholarship and why it got me into it. So you can see there, it gives you eight grand over the course of your studies. So two grand every year of your study. So I'm studying for uh, four years, so that gives me two grand every year. Uh, there's also a Technician's um, Quest Scholarship, so that gives you around uh, one grand uh, for the people studying. So technicians more going through the vocational route. This scholarship that I'm on is going through the university degree route. And um, yeah, it's a really beneficial 
uh, program to be on. Uh, you also can be a free student member of the Institute of Civil Engineers and this gives you ben many benefits like access to knowledge resources, um, uh, access to people in the industry like experts and it could give you funds as well if you are doing a engineering related vocational project. So how this quest thing came about was that I saw a newsletter in um, my sixth form college that just advertised it and it said apply here, you could get a scholarship of £8,000 overall your university say and two grand signing on. Career lined up in civil engineering which is a job that as you can see it's quite rewarding and I thought why not so I sent off an application and the application got accepted and I was invited to interview and the interview day took place in the Institute of Civil Engineers headquarters in Westminster down in central London and um, it was in this massive great hall so they had all these stools uh, around for different companies who were looking to sign on young Quest scholars you can go around and talk to the engineers um, see what it's about and uh, you go off for an interview luckily for me I was um, selected by Morgan Sindel you can see in the picture there there was the Morgan Sindel stand in the main hall but uh, when I went off to interview got interviewed by Morgan Sindel and I uh, got a scholarship so I was really pleased about that I think there was about 200 people there in the interview day and probably about 350 applicants overall and I think they selected about 70 people so there is um, there is a good chance that if you're committed and as, as well as committed that you've got extracurricular activities going on like it's not just about grades like there's there's people there who got higher grades than me but because I'd done extracurricular stuff outside of um, just studying hard so for example I was part of some charity fundraiser when I was 16 I talked about that a lot in my interview and it's this initiative that they're really after so if you are passionate for civil engineering you've got decent grades but you've got a really good extracurricular um, sort of stuff going on then you could have a good chance of getting this scholarship which is such a great opportunity to get into the industry to get that support for university and um, and yeah touch on some of the extra be uh, benefits aside from the money and the uh, route into the industry that you may not be thinking about right now so when you go into university you're competing against everyone on your course for the same sort of jobs and placements so if you're doing a placement year at university you've got a apply to the same jobs and you've got to make sure your application is perfect and everyone's trying to get the best application with this it kind of sorts it out for you so I didn't have to apply for my placement year it got deferred due to Covid but I'm still hopefully going to be on it and um, I didn't have to worry about getting experience because I was given experience during summer placements uh, which you'll get throughout your university degree uh, when you're not studying and you get the constant contact with the uh, civil engineers in the company so they they kind of tell you from their experience what to expect what to do and it's it's a lot more uh, clear cut and it's a good plan to have um, if you get onto the scholarship instead of just rushing around on your own applying to loads of different companies um, many of whom are not even looking for applicants so it took it took a lot of time off my hands and gave me a lot more advice when I had this scholarship in the bag um, so there's um, it's, it's quite good like I've said there is that as you, you know people are looking out for your career it's it's the plan in action that is really helpful um, if you if you're not sure about civil engineering you you get so much information and knowledge from these senior civil engineers in the company that and you they, they take you to sites as well you can really find out so much through the scholarship more than you can ever can just through looking through a textbook and the whole community aspect well I wasn't the only one who got signed up by uh, Morgan Sindel my particular company there were 70 other people 20 of them went to Morgan Sindel so we've got this big group chat now where 
we can all compare experiences and reflect with each other's journey for our career. So we're all in the exact same position at different universities. Um, and it's this support network that is really beneficial. So you can find out more about uh, civil engineering careers and the ICE Quest Scholarship online at the ICE Institute of Structural Engineers website, ICE. And um, important key date to notice that is that applications for the um, for the Quest Scholarship close on the 12th of April. And this is open to year 13 students. So students who are in the upper year of sixth form or college. Um, so you'll be going to university next year. So the interview day is roughly around the uh, September time, um, maybe different due to COVID, but um, yeah, make sure you get the applications in for the 12th of April. Thank you.